what we're hoping for here at Handy is that students leave not only with understanding of the core content expectations, but also uh, that they leave here with essential skills to be successful in life. Transactional change is, is often fast, but it, but it doesn't always stick, right? Transformational change takes time, but it sustains. This is uh, really creating a, a, a rich environment for their learning. By providing students and teachers these opportunities to learn and grow and to continue to stretch, um, that they're gonna be better off in the long run. I know that people desire greater things for our kids, and I know that that's what is in store for these kids. So if we can teach the kids skills like problem solving and empathy and analyzing and questioning, they'll be much better off than just rote memorization things out of a book from content. I think this is something that everyone should be excited about. There's three primary areas that we're looking to transform in the school uh, next year. Uh, the first is the instructional approach. We want to transition uh, all teaching and learning here to uh, project-based learning uh, so that all learning that will occur uh, will happen through the context of completing a project or solving a real-world problem. A primary change in a partnership for us is the new tech network. New Tech Network is a um, nonprofit organization. Um, they are an instructional design partner. They are affiliated with over 200 schools across the country. We are working with them. They are working with us. It's a, it truly is a partnership to help redesign our instructional model and instructional experience here. Full integration at the sixth grade level for next year. And then in the 2023-2024 year, full integration at sixth and seventh grade. And then the 2024, 2025 years, so three years from now, when, when those incoming sixth graders are eighth graders, the entire school will be wall-to-wall -wall project based learning. So the skills that we in incorporate in project based learning are essential. I think information nowadays is at your fingertips. It's available. You can ex access it anywhere. Um, but what you do with that information is what, what counts and what matters. And so asking students to do things like be advocates for their own learning through agency and collaborate with group members to be able to write and communicate and speak with confidence uh, are skills that will serve them in whatever path they choose. So instead of teaching kids how all of the components of how to solve a problem and then give them the story problem, we give them the story problem first and then ask them to work collaboratively with each other and with their teacher in order to determine what needs to be done or learned in order to solve that problem or complete that task. Students will be working together collaboratively. They'll be solving problems, uh, real world problems. So um, the outcomes usually will be something that benefits the school, the community, um, sometimes even bigger than that. So yeah, it's really exciting. We, we no longer have kids working in silos. They do need to be able to figure out how to adapt, how to become a problem solver, how to analyze, how to question. So project-based learning really does prepare them better for those kind of situations they'll be entering when they grow up. Uh, the second is we want to uh, shrink the school by creating small teams, uh, both at the grade level uh, and at the, the classroom level, so that way students don't feel like they're a part of a 800 student school, but instead a part of a small, cohesive team uh, with shared teachers, shared students, so that way they can form that small school atmosphere. Handy sixth grade will have three different teams. And so as a student, I'm going to be with the same group of peers every day on my team. In addition to the same group of peers, I'm also going to have the same set of teachers as my entire team. So much like an athletic team, when you, you are on a basketball team, you build that camaraderie, you have that social accountability with your teammates, and so it helps develop that sense of belonging and connectedness. We no longer have kids just going through the hallways, mixing from place to place. They belong to a family, they belong to a team. And so those four teachers really own those hundred children and they, they, they can figure out what they need and communicate with each other through this time that's available to them to really do what's best for kids. You'll see them calling families, you'll see them really getting to know kids better because it does become a family unit through their teaming. You, you can't expect people to work in a team if you don't have them in a team. This isn't a lecture about, uh, about teamwork. This isn't a, a lecture about uh, communication. It's, it's asking students to communicate to the, to the community and to each other. So it's really teaming time is really a win-win for students and teachers. 
third thing is just a focus on building a positive uh, culture uh, throughout the school. Um, we've been using the, the phrase, we are crew. Crew is, it will be a structure that we use for advisory, but it's also, um, when I say a spirit, it's also that belief that, uh, you know, all of us have an, have an active um, role, but a responsibility towards leading Handy in the right direction. We, we are crew, not passengers. And, and it just resonated with us because, uh, yeah, get, get in the boat and pick up the paddle, man. We all have responsibility here, right? Everybody here is crew. Everybody's here. There's no, there's no passive wildcats. We are all active in our growth and we all have a responsibility to take that position, right? Yeah.